You're giving patients 60 units of Lantis, 110 units of Lantis, and you don't know what the blood sugar is. What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lori. If you are new here, I am a family nurse practitioner and on this channel I talk nursing. I share my journey from nursing assistant all the way now working as a nurse practitioner. My goal since I started this platform has always been to motivate, encourage, and inspire you no matter where you are on your nursing journey, but particular our future nurses because y'all, yeah, we need the clean house when it comes on to nursing. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button and also click the notification bell so you are notified every time I do upload a video. Nursing is one of those fields that it's more than just, I'm handing you a, a, ta a cup of Tylenol and then I'm gonna go sit back down. It's more than that. Since I've been working as a nurse practitioner, I realized that when it comes on to truly doing nursing, a lot of times the nurses feel as if certain things is not for them to do. And I don't know where we get this notion that as a nurse, I should not be helping a patient with their ADLs, their activities of daily living. If I'm a nurse, I'm not supposed to help clean up a patient because I didn't go to nursing school for that. And this is very disheartening for me. One of the things that I wanna challenge all of you to do if you're a nurse, is to ask yourself this question. Would you allow you in your current state, how you practice nursing, would you allow you to take care of you or somebody that you truly deeply care about? Think about it. If how you're practicing nursing and how you're handling your patients, would you allow yourself to care for yourself the way how you care for your patients? And if the answer is no, and I want you to be totally honest and really dig deep and look into yourself. If the answer is no, you got work to do and there is a problem. I have been a nurse practitioner now, practicing for almost three years and I practice in a nursing home setting. Now, I was never a nurse in a nursing home setting. And I have a lot of videos talking about the nursing home settings. I do vlogs all the time that show the day in the life of me working in a nursing home setting. I have videos of me complaining a lot of times about the nursing home setting. And I know some of you guys are like, we get it, we get it. But truly, I don't think that you get it unless you are working in these areas. And the reason why I keep doing that is because because we definitely need to shed light on this and we definitely need to do better as a whole. I know it's not all on the nurses because we need better regulations when it comes on to nursing patient ratio and all of those things and the staffing issues I know. Purpose of this video is me telling you a couple of do's and don'ts when you start working as a nurse in any setting, but particularly in a nursing home setting because that's pretty much where I'm practicing. One of the big don'ts that I want to encourage all of you to do when you're working in a nursing home setting is to walk away from a patient if the patient is going downhill. The patient is about to code. I see this so much and sometimes I'm trying to figure out is it because they don't care or is it because they are just scared and they've never experienced this? But if it's because you have never experienced this, how are you going to learn this? You know what I mean? How are you going to learn this for when it happens the next time? There's so many instances where I've walked in and patients are, they're not my patients, patients are down, not doing well. And then when I call for help, like nobody wants to come. And I check the patient and I'm like, okay, we need to initiate CPR on this patient and the DON will come. People just don't want to show up to, to, to do this. If it's because you're nervous, you want to stay there to learn because the next time you're going to continue to walk away and you're not going to know what to do. Stay there, initiate your CPR, know what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do in a case um, like this. And then for the next time, you're going to be a little bit more comfortable with it. But don't just walk away from the patient. It, it shows that uh, you don't give a shit. And that should never be a situation. And like I said, I know nursing is stressful. I have been there. I have been there working as a nurse and I know that it's stressful. One of the do's that I want to share with you if you are a um, newer nurse, you want to always give a report to the oncoming nurse. And when I say report, I don't mean this person take their pill whole, this person take their pills crush. That's all I see. Honestly, 
when I go to the nursing home and I see and hear the nurses giving report, that is all I'm hearing them saying. Yes, that information is pertinent and that information is amazing, but you need to give proper reports to the oncoming and the outgoing nurse. And if you are the nurse that is coming on shift and you don't get any solid report, it is your duty as the nurse to find out a couple of history and a couple of things that's going on with a patient. And I'm bringing this up because I cannot tell you how many times I go to the nursing home and I will talk to a nurse or say something to a nurse and I'm, I always get, I don't know. I'm gonna give you a prime example. I went to talk to a nurse about a patient. The patient, I know this patient. The patient is normally a certain way. So when I see him, I'm like, something is wrong with him. And then I'm trying to talk with the nurse and she's like, I don't know, I didn't get a report. And when I tell her one of the patient's history and I won't say what it is, she's like, oh, I didn't know the patient had a history of that, but she administered a medication earlier in the day that indicate that that's why the patient is taking the medication. You know what I mean? So you want to have a little bit of know it about your patient. I have been a ICU nurse. That's my background. My full background is of an ICU nurse. In the ICU, we give detailed report on a patient. We will tell you everything step by step what happened to the patient from the patient hit the hospital door. However, not every nurse does that, which is totally fine. But always on my shift, it's my due diligence to go look and say, this, this, this is going out with the patient and this is what the patient has a history for, you know, have a history of. All of these things that I'm saying is truly nursing 101, but I do know that a lot of times nursing school don't really teach you a lot of things. So this video is not to shame you or let you feel bad. It's truly to encourage you to do better in how you're practicing. Another thing that I want to encourage you to do if you are a nurse, please, scam through the progress note of the provider. You know, you will save yourself a lot of heartache and a lot of headache and a lot of issues every time you're calling the doctor or calling the provider about something that was addressed and it's in their progress note. Uh, another thing, you need to know why you're giving a patient it any medication you're giving them. You know, the nursing home is like, well, it, they try to make it so lackadaisical, like, you know, this is their home and because it's their home, you don't have to do X, Y, and Z. Nah, man, <laughs> nah. You know, if you are giving a patient certain medication, it, it is if you Google, Google and say, okay, what is this medication for? I'm gonna know what a medication for. Let me look up this medication. It's very easy to do that. Another thing that you want to do as a nurse, I don't care if you're in a nursing home setting and the provider or the, doc the doctor, the provider, whatever, didn't put an order into the computer for you to do it. If you are administering blood pressure medication on patients, please check their blood pressure. If you're giving patients insulin, please check the patient's blood sugar. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen patients and I'm trying to look through their blood pressure trends. No blood pressure has been checked for a month, no blood, no blood pressure. And you know some of the culprits of some of these nurses as well. One thing about me and how I practice, I am the nurse practitioner who actually, ch I check my own blood pressure because there's some nurses that I just don't trust and I know they're not checking patients' blood pressure. Sad but true. If the patient is not on any blood pressure meds, okay, yeah. But if the patient is on two, three, four blood pressure medication, you should be checking their blood pressure before you're administering any blood pressure medication to them. The same thing goes with insulin. You're giving pa patients 60 units of Lantis, 110 units of Lantis, and you don't know what the blood sugar is. That, my friend, is a problem, and we need to do better. We all need to do better collectively in this field. My motto is always this. Sickness and old age is inevitable. We're all gonna get old. We're all probably gonna get sick. We don't know where we're gonna end up, and God forbid I am laying in this bed with a future nurse who does these things who doesn't give a ish about me sitting in my urine and my feces for 12 hours. God forbid I get one of these nurses who gives me 80 units of Lantis and they didn't even check my sugar and my blood sugar was already 50. You know what I mean? We need to do better. We need to do better. This is not to bash. This is not to any of that. This is just to say, 
come on nurses why did you decide to be a nurse you know what i mean why did the feel of nursing pull you because like i said it's more than just here go a cup of Tylenol and walk away it's more than that i'm no mother teresa but there's certain way that i treat my patients since i was a nursing assistant up till to this day that I am a nurse practitioner. I will go into the nursing home facility. I have my white coat on, my stethoscope around my neck, and I'm taking patients off of the bedpan. I'm cleaning up patients, I'm helping them to the bathroom, I'm getting them water, because we're all human at the end of the day. And that could be you, that could be your loved one, that could be your mom, whatever, whatever. That is it, guys. Um, I hope, I, I don't think this video was that long. I don't even know what this video is going to be titled. I really don't know. But uh, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And I'll definitely catch you guys up on my next video. Bye, guys.